It's like the ancient Chinese proverb says, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and you're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. In today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is covering part 12 of my Delta guitar build. And the Delta guitar is the guitar where I'm combining the features that I like from a headless guitar with the features that I like from a traditional guitar that still has a headstock. And what I'm going to be covering specifically is I'm going to be making the nut. And actually, I'm going to be starting the nut. But in this video, I won't get all the way to uh, the completion of the nut because when I make a guitar nut, it's really a series of steps where I creep up towards the finish. And what I'll do is I'll start by uh, fabricating the blank and then I'll cut the slots for the strings. And I'll take those slots almost to their final depth, but not quite. And then in a future video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust the string action at the bridge. And that's gonna involve some steps that you might not be aware of when building a guitar. So you'll want to check that out as I do that. But then once that action is set, I can then go back and finish the nut by taking the slots down to their final depth. So let's jump in and get started. The first thing I've got to do is select an appropriate size chunk of bone. And I've cut these from a cow femur. So once I found a piece that's roughly the size that I need, a little bit larger, usually in width, I'll take it over to my belt sander and I'll begin the process of rough shaping the blank into a rectangle that's thick enough to fit into the slot that was cut into the fretboard. Once I have the basic shape, I'll then sand with progressively finer grits all the way up to about 800 grit. And at that point, I want the blank to fit snug into the slot. To mark the top edge of the nut, I have a pencil which I ground in half using my belt sander. And I'll just place that onto the frets and then run it across the frets from one side of the fretboard to the other so that the pencil lead draws a line that follows the radius of the fretboard onto the face of the nut. Then it's back to the belt sander so that I can sand the nut uh, towards its final shape. And you have to remember the pencil line that I drew has thickness. So the top of the top edge of the line would represent the bottom of the slots at their deepest point. And the bottom of the pencil line would represent the top of the frets. So what I'll do is I'll sand the shape till it's almost to that line leaving about a 32nd of an inch of material above it. I like to think of the process as a series of steps which gradually brings you closer to the final nut. You don't want to try to get there all at once because you could go too far and thereby cause you to have to start the process over again. With the initial shape of the nut now complete, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a 10 gauge nut slotting file and I'm gonna cut shallow notches where I want the outer strings to be positioned on the top of the nut. And I just eyeball this, but it's about an eighth of an inch or roughly three millimeters in from the end of the nut. Now I can install the strings in preparation for determining their position across the top edge of the nut. I'll start by installing the high E and the low E strings first, and then I'll use my string spacing ruler to determine the position of the other strings. Thank you. 
Next, I grabbed a 10 gauge nut slotting file and cut shallow notches for each of the strings. The string spacing ruler is a great way to determine the initial spacing. However, it's always a good idea to string up the guitar and check the spacing just to make sure everything looks visually correct. To cut the slots, I'm using gauged nut slotting files. And it's difficult to find the exact file size for each gauge of string that's out there. So you just want to try and get as close as possible, leaning towards slightly larger than the string that you're cutting the slot for. And as I cut the slot, I'm going to gently rock the, the, the file from side to side to make the slot a little bit wider than the string. And then I'll angle the file down towards the headstock in order to create fall away because the only place I want the nut contacting the string is right where the string leaves the nut at the start of the scale length. This gives the best tone and sustain. As I cut the slots for each string, my goal is to have as low action as possible over the first fret, and I'll check it by pressing the string down at the second fret, and then I would want just the tiniest bit of space between the bottom of the string and the top of that first fret. But to get there, I want to just creep up on that depth. I don't want to go there all at once because I still need to set the action of the strings at the bridge which will be measured usually at the 17th fret. So I'll, I'll bring the slots down almost to their final depth, but not quite. It's, they're still a little bit high. And then I'll adjust the action at the bridge to get it where I want it at the 17th fret. Then I can go back and finish cutting the final depth of each of the nut slots. Okay, well, I'm at a stopping point for this video. And in the next video, I'll finish the nut, but to do that, I need to set the string action at the bridge. Now, normally that would just involve raising or lowering the saddles to get the string action just right over the frets. And typically what I do is I measure the bottom, the distance between the bottom of the string and the top of the 17th fret. However, in this case, this is a prototype guitar. It's, uh, it's a design that I've never built before. And oftentimes when I am building a new design, I can encounter issues where I can't get the string action exactly where I want it at the start of adjusting the string action. Because with my guitars, I need to make sure that I can raise and lower the strings to set the action anywhere from really super low to super high. It's just gonna depend on the player who's going to eventually own this guitar, what kind of action that they like. And I wanna make sure that I can provide them with a guitar where the action can be adjusted to whatever action that they like. And with this particular guitar, even with the bridges in recessed into the body and with the saddles set as low as they can go, the action was still a little too high for my taste. So what I need to do is I need to fit the neck into the body. And this is a process where I can adjust the angle of the neck by either raising or lowering the nut relative to the body, and that will bring the strings either higher or lower. If I drop the nut down, if I angle the neck down, I can pull the strings down closer to the frets. And I ha follow a specific process for doing this. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in episode 13, is how I fit the, the neck into the body. And I think you'll find this useful because there are often times where we as guitar builders will run into that problem where we get everything assembled, we string it up, and even when the saddles are in the lowest position, the, the string action over the frets can be too high. And we're left trying to figure out what it is we're going to do to fix that. And this is a technique that really only works with necks that are bolt in. And you can do it with a set in neck as long as you check that action early on before you glue the neck in. So just keep that in mind. But um, until the next episode, uh, I hope, as always, I've 
uh, informed you and educated you. And if you're new to the channel, you'll consider subscribing. And in the meantime, give us a, a thumbs up and take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.